My name is Rosemary Njeri, and I will be reading our scripture for today from, the, from John chapter 10, um, verse 1 to 32. In our church Bibles, it's page 843, ESV version. I repeat, John chapter 10, verses 1 to 42. And I'll read. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said again to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and, in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, he has a demon and is insane. Why listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one who is oppressed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? At that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe me because you're not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Your gods. If you call them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the, Father has, whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you're blaspheming because I said I am the son of God? 
If I'm not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do, you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Again, they sought to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing at first, and there he remained. And many came to him, and, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. Blessed be the word of the Lord. So good morning. good morning. How are you? Yes, I am grateful to be here. My name is Moses Derito. I am one of the elders here. I am married to Emma. She's, a, she's somewhere in the church, and the Lord has blessed us with two girls, Ngendo and Janja. And uh, I delight in sharing today with God's words through the book of John. And I hope you are going to be blessed. Yeah, part of what I do, um, other than being a church elder here, I'm, a, I'm an insurance agent. Yeah, and I thought, uh, I'm not marketing now. The two of them can all go hand in hand. Huh? <laughs> anyway, I thought it's good for me to just tell you something small about insurance. So that when you're talking to insurance people, you can look like someone who knows a bit of insurance. Yeah, yeah. a few things that you need to know is that uh, we have around 47 insurance companies that are registered by IRA. Yeah, IRA is the Insurance Regulatory Authority to give insurances in this country. And uh, some of them are there. Yes, and uh, the penetration of insurance has remained very low in this country. And... Uh, but not just in this country, but actually the entire continent of Africa. We are barely 3% of people who have actually taken up insurance. And uh, we're actually number three, uh, behind South Africa, who, who are leading, and number two is Morocco. And uh, the penetration is not as high. So, the, the next slide. Um, I just wanted to highlight, not that I have any alleges to these three, some, some of the things that we actually tell people that uh, our assurance is all taglines that are coming from the insurance companies. Like Britain will tell you that, uh, that yeah, they are with you every step of the way. And then there's another one that is a small, uh, so small one there, that is from Allianz. They say insurance solutions from A to, to Z. So if you're looking for any solution, come to them. And then uh, a peer tells you that uh, they ensure happiness. They want you to remain happy, yeah, even when it is so hard. So some of, uh, those are some of our uh, words. And actually, most of them do have taglines and uh, to capture the people to think about insurance. And then one thing that um, when people come to you is that they ask you, do you have a policy that can take care of everything? No. I think that is a question that we are asked but, uh, by, 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 by clients when, whenever we approach them. But I don't think there is, we, don't have, we have a solution like that one. We don't have a solution like that one, unfortunately. We have to give you like five or eight policies to be somewhere near to be to feeling that you are you're safe. Yeah? So how does this all relate to, what, to the book of uh, John 10? So stop thinking about insurance for now. Let's now focus on, uh, on John chapter 10. And um, John chapter 10 is a very good book that I, I have loved this, uh, this January. And um, that God is, that I am very secure in this year. Even as I look forward to 2024 and many years to come. Because of the security that I have actually in Christ. Even when people go for insurance, look for security, they, they actually want to, to, to get this security. And uh, our, our guiding uh, phrase today is that we are secure in Jesus Christ. And to be able to 
to learn this. Uh, we are going to have three topics that uh, we are going to be to be looking at today. Verses 1 to 18, we are going to see that Jesus as the door and the true shep shepherd. And then verses uh, 22 all the way to 29, we are going to see that you are very secure in this good shepherd. And finally, we are going to realize from verses 30 to 42 that this, uh, that, that this good shepherd is actually God who is worthy of who we, we ought to worship. He is actually, he acts, he's actually God and he is worthy of our trust and worship. And uh, let's go in. I thank you so much. Um, I'm forgetting your name, sorry. Rosemary for reading for us so well. Yeah, thank you. There are very many verses. I, someone was asking, do we need to read all those verses? But it is very good for us to actually hear the gospel being read out aloud. Part of the reading of, uh, public reading of scripture is very, very good whenever we are worshiping God. And also get time to when you can have actually very big portions of God's word. Like, they recommend that if you actually want to go through the Bible the entire year, ensure you go at least three chapters every day of the 365 days, and you might as well go through the, 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 the entire book, the entire book by Bible. So, John chapter 10, verses 1 is telling us that Verily, very, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You see, Jesus is, just before we get to where we are actually at right now, the preceding chapter, verses, uh, chapter, chapter 9, is a story of a man who was, uh, had actually been born blind. And, Jesus, uh, and uh, Jesus, and when he sees Jesus passing, he cries to Jesus and, uh, and uh, who had been born blind from Nini, uh, from, 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 uh, from uh, and he goes to Jesus and he was actually healed. After being healed, it's a continuation. It was a celebration time, as you see on verses uh, 22. And as, he's, uh, and as he's healed, this man, uh, chapter 9 and 10, is like a continuation of the same, of the, uh, the same day. It's like it's happening during the same day or the same time. And one of the things that we see is that the Pharisees, who consider the, the, themselves the shepherds, or the Jews, or the God's people at that time, want to water down the miracle that has just happened of somebody who had actually been who had actually been born blind. You see, Jesus is not very happy with these people, and he's actually telling them, "Who even gave you the mandate to be the shepherds? Who are you? How did you come to be the shepherds?" Those who have not come through or have not been assigned by God to be the shepherds, as he actually says that the, his father sent him to come to be the shepherd. He came in the right way. And the gospel shows us so clearly from Genesis all the way after the fall, God is introducing us to Jesus and what, what he would actually come to, to us and to save us. And you know, He's telling us that he who has not come through the channel, being welcomed by God into, the, in, into, into, into shepherdhood, into leading God's people, that is a robber and a thief. He's actually calling them thieves and robbers. They're not doing God's work. They're only doing their own work. You know, instead of helping this man and rejoicing this person who had actually not been born blind, not rejoicing with him, they want to water down to want to, uh, for, to, uh, for him to see as though Jesus is a sinner because he does not uh, follow the rules of these shepherds. 
And they first of all go to the parents. The parents refer, uh, refer, refer them to the man, tells him, he's of age, go and talk to him. And when he comes to him, he's... And then when he sees, when they see that they, do, they are not agreeing to what uh, they actually, he is actually saying, they, 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 they chase him away. That is not the work of a shepherd. And he's comparing himself to them. He says, this, this all, verses, uh, verses, uh, verses 4 uh, says, when, when he had brought all out, uh, 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 out all of his own, he goes before them, and as sheep fall off him, for they know his voice. He's actually telling them, the sheep that God has given him, they know his voice. They follow after Christ. There is no place you'll actually go that Christ has not gone. Christ is the one leading the church. He's leading his people. He's leading his flock. He's leading the sheep. You know, we are being compared to sheep. Sheep are those animals at all. If you have ever had sheep with you, they, they are frightened even by water, by moving water. They are frightened by even as something on the road. They are even, it's, you cannot even want to cross the road with a sheep because... They could be hit. So we are those people who are very, we who are follow Christ are those people who are very weak. But those who are God's children, they know, they, they know his voice. They follow him. They do not follow any other. You know, and, they, and actually what, if you come to realize, sheep actually have a leader. They follow and they even, they actually know where they, 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 they actually stay. And that's what Jesus is telling these people. That's my sheep know me. And I know them. You know. This is a good thing about a shepherd. And uh, this is our daughter, Janja. Hi, Janja. Yes, he, he knows me. He knows the daughter. <laughs> So he's saying that Jesus, sorry, I, I got distracted a bit. It's okay, it's okay. Leave her alone. She'll go. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, this is my wife, Emma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I'm getting myself back to the message. Yeah? <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. So we're actually at verse 5, which is actually saying that uh, a stranger they will not follow. Then he actually tells them, he goes further and tells them, as though they were not understanding what he's actually telling them, that, that door, I am actually saying that you go through the door. I am the door. So there is no other way that we can actually go to God or be belonging to God if we do not go through Christ. Christ is the only way and the only means we have to God. Any other way can only qualify you to be a robber and a thief. And you will not be known. You are among those people who will be told, you I didn't know. And we can, actually, we can actually not serve God or call ourselves God's servants if we, actually, we have actually not gone through Jesus Christ or we have not been called by Jesus. And we do not hear his voice. I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. In Christ we have pasture. There is food, there is wellness. He actually goes ahead and says that he, they, that, that, that thief cometh to steal, uh, non, uh, the thief cometh not, not, but to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You know, I like even what the, the, the psalm that uh, Elder John started with, Psalms 23. They're actually connected. Jesus being the shepherd. 
And it actually talks about the shepherd. And you know, Jesus is saying, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. I have actually gone through it. I have gone through the cross ahead of you. I'm going ahead of you. I'm the one leading you. You are following me. And you've actually come to me. I'm promising you abundant life. You're going to find pasture. You're going to be saved. And find pasture in Christ. Any other way is the way of the robber. Trust the gospel. Are you the one? Are you hearing the gospel? Are you listening? Is there any other voice that you're actually listening? Do you know the voice of the master? The master is only one. And he's the only one in whom we can actually find pasture. The thief cometh to steal, but I have come. You know, when these when this actually people are actually chasing this man who had been born blind, and Jesus sees him after he's been chased out by, 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 by the Pharisees, he tells them, don't worry, I came that they may see. That is my mandate. That's why I came. That, that is why Jesus came. And when we follow him, we join him. We know what he's doing. We become like him. He's missional. When he actually goes through verses 12 all the way to 18, it is actually enumerating to us some of the qualities of a good shepherd he is. He is saying, why am I a good shepherd? Comparing himself to the Pharisees. And whatever is, he says is actually contrary to what actually they do. One, he knows the sheep. He knows us personally. He knows you personally. He knows your weak points. He knows your strong points. He knows when you're warm and when you're actually cold. You can trust him. He knows you so well. Amen? He says he identifies him. So why he is even ready. He was ready to go and die for the sheep. He's, he cannot be compared to a hired shepherd. He created a noma and a potter. That is what Christ does not do that. He is there. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. I am for you. I know you. If somebody knows, tells you that they know you and they don't love you, they know you. Uh, they, they say, if somebody told you that they, they, they love you but they don't know you, that could be false. But if somebody actually knows you and loves you, even with your weaknesses and Jesus actually uh, loves us, Jesus loves us. He has an intimate relationship with us. We are following him. He is, his love is sacrificial, dying on the cross for us. And then he says in verses 15 there about, sorry, fifteen and 16 he's saying that I have other sheep out there. Remember, the primary people that he's actually talking to are not us. He was actually addressing the Jews. And then he says of other people like me, you and me, the Gentiles, that he's ready to go for them out there. He's missional. That's who a good shepherd is. Going out to follow, even for the sheep that is out there, that is lost. He came for the lost. Do you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you studying on the door? Or are you being missional with Christ? Are you going out there this year to show people to Christ? Just as penetration of insurance is so low, the penetration of Christianity is also very low in our world today. And what can we do in the mission field? It's just by like, just being like Jesus Christ. He who goes out, I like the way he goes through another route, a route that people would not go normally. Like for example, he goes through, through Samaria, Samaria when he's going through, and he finds a Samaritan woman, and he gives them a he gives her the gospel. This is Jesus Christ going out of the way to call us to call sinners like you and I to Him. That is who Jesus Christ is, a good shepherd, one you can actually follow. Do you hear His voice? Are you His? Then we go to point number two of our learning today, that we actually secure 
he the good shepherd. He has actually already told us that he's actually a, a good shepherd. And he actually has shown us how we can actually identify who a good shepherd is. And he says from verses, uh, from verses, Twenty-five. Jesus answered them and told them, "You know, these people actually, actually now starting to, you know, uh, verses nineteen all the way to 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 twenty-two. It's actually saying that these people continue to argue, saying, this guy the way he's talking, he's like a madman.' And then they're arguing and asking, can a madman perform a miracle? Yeah. And then he starts. They are they're telling. They're asking him. They're asking him." How long are you going to, how long, uh, how, long uh, how long will you keep us in suspense? Tell us if you are Christ. That's what the, 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 the Jews are asking him. And uh, that is verses 25. And this is how he responds to them. The reason you don't know me, but I'm Christ, is because you are not my sheep. If you are my sheep, you would know me. You would have heard my voice and known who I am. He's telling them from verses 26 that believe me, he not, because you're not of my sheep, as I say unto you. Sorry. But you do not believe me, uh, believe because you're not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch, to snatch them out of my hand. See the security that we have in Jesus. That who, those who have followed Jesus, those who belong to Jesus, those who hear his voice, those who have followed Jesus, those who follow Christ. And what is following Christ? It's, it's trusting in him. Loving what he loves. Going out for the other sheep. You know, that is following Christ. Those who belong to Jesus, those who hear his voice, he's saying, I, have gi I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Neither, of, neither shall any man pluck them out of my heart. In simple terms, he's saying, no one can separate them from me. Not even trial, not even temptation, not even death, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. That is what he is actually saying, that we are actually secure and safe. Somebody there say that once we're in Christ, we cannot be lost. There's nothing like backsliding out of Christ's hand. If somebody actually backslides, it means they were not there. It is possible they, were, they didn't actually belong. They were not Jesus' people at all. But as far as you're in Christ, it does not depend on how good you are. It does not depend on what you do. Christ finished work. Gives us security. Salvation is God's work from start to finish. Christ's righteousness, not our own, secures our salvation because we are those people who, after hearing this sermon, we feel like we belong to Christ. When something comes, we turn. We actually love sinning than we love the gospel. We are quick to go to sin. We are quick to sin. We are quick to forget the gospel. So we cannot depend on, how, on our goodness. But we can trust in Christ's completed work on the cross. And that's why we can actually dare say that we are actually very secure in Christ. Very secure in Christ. No policy can compare to that. You know, that gives relief to those who are in Christ Jesus. That we can rest in Christ. 
and not ourselves. Amen? So this year, just follow Christ. Trust him. Trust, trust in his completed work on the cross. Finally, we go to the last uh, learning today. That Jesus, the good shepherd, is God, worthy of trust and worship. As though the fight with the Jews is not enough, even calling him a demon, he goes ahead and says another thing. That I, now the, the, the verse is 30, he says, I and the Father are one. Mimi na mungu sem? Hey, these people lift the stone. They want to kill him. How dare you? And he's actually addressing the Pharisees. How dare you compare yourself with God? You are a human being. How dare you do that? But what does Jesus tell them? I have shown you many good works. And God has sent me. If those who follow Christ are called gods, what about those who has been sent of God? What do you call him? Then if you don't want to trust in my, in, in, in my assertion that I am actually God, trust in my work. You know, these people, they're not like me and you. These people have, had actually followed Jesus through his life, his, through life, his that three years of life. They knew him from the age 12 he was, when he was being left by his mother and father in the temple. Answering them questions that they were unable to answer. For three days. They knew so much about this man. They even told him, See, there is a scripture that says that. He said, they, they know him. They actually knew that this guy, the first miracle he performs is turning water into wine. They know this gentleman Fed 5,000 from five floors given by a young boy. They knew the private miracles and the public miracles that Jesus had actually done. You know, the, 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 the private miracles that Jesus would actually do and tell people, Usiwabia watu. And the public miracles that actually Jesus actually did. And they knew all these things. Can this be a demon, surely? Can a demon perform such miracles? Can a demon bring back Lazarus from death to life? Actually, the following chapter tells us as much that Jesus actually raises, Jesus actually raises uh, Lazarus four days later. You know, G Jews had this belief that Mutu na Kufaga Sikutatu Zikisha, three days after. So Jesus actually is coming on the fourth day. It was Kikisha that this guy had actually died, completely died then. <laughs> And he comes and raises this man. This man cannot be a demon, surely. He is God. Amen? And you know, after following him, he's telling them, he, 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 he goes further and tells them, verses 38, I am doing the works of my father. Then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you, you do not believe me, believe the works. They're still again with Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you know he's God's son? Then verses 40 is saying, He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing at first. And he remained, and there he remained. And many came to him and said, John did, did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. Just see a contrast us of God's flock versus people who are not God's flock. These people hear the gospel and they turn and they follow Jesus. They are not arguing with him. They are able, to, they are able to, to tell the difference between Jesus and John. They see John, preached, he actually preached the gospel, but John did not perform any miracle. They know the difference. They know who Jesus is. How Asubuani, they follow Jesus. Do you hear God's voice and do you follow it? That is a differentiator and that can only be the only assurance for you to be God's child. That you are secure in Christ. That when Christ comes again, he will give you eternal life. And you actually have it right now. 
It's not that he'll give you that. We already have it. You don't have to wait to be called saints. No, we're already saints now. Because of Christ's completed work. Not because of our work. Not because of anything. But because of Christ. What is your response to knowing Jesus? To knowing that Jesus is God. Worthy of worship. But on a subwana. Be like these people who are responding. They respond. They believe. Many of them, they come to Jesus. So as I bring this to a close, is, is it already afternoon? Yes, it's already two, uh, a few minutes past the afternoon. So these are some of the lessons that we're actually learning today. That Jesus knows you and perfectly. He is the good shepherd. Do you hear his voice? That is the only way that you can be sure that you are safe and secure in him. And you can actually trust him this year because he knows you deeply. There is no place, there is nothing that will happen to you that Jesus has not seen or gone through. Are you hearing the gospel and obeying it? Are you fighting for the unity? Ship as Jesus is doing. What we are learning today is inviting us to follow Jesus daily, this year and all of our lives. It's also encouraging us to trust in the Good Shepherd for guidance, provision, and eternal security. He says that those who go in, they find pastor in him. And at Meza, he lays the table for us. Even in the midst of hard times. Amen? That's what he say in Psalms 23. So our call is to emulate him. Not to stand by the door like the Jews, but to show them Christ, the Son of God, who is God, who is fully God, and trust him and follow him. Because we know that the thief comes to steal and to kill, but he has come to give us life and to give it, to give to, to us in abundance. Do you trust in Jesus? Are you his? Have you started a relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you, are you going to, to be those kind of those people in verses 40 and 42 that we see? They hear Jesus, he stays with them, they follow him and they believe in him. Are you going to be among them? Are you one of those? If you've not started a relationship with Jesus Christ this year, I invite you to come. Come. He's, he's open and willing to, to welcome you in. He's always looking outward to come to welcome as many into his kingdom. And once you're in, you are secure, perfectly secure. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful to you. Thank you for the, the gift of Jesus as the good shepherd. Thank you for helping us know who you are and for helping us see who is not a shepherd and who you are as a good shepherd, Lord. Thank you for calling us to trust you, Lord. Even though we walk through the shadow of, the de uh, of death, you are with us. And there is no place you, we will go or any temptation we shall face that you have not faced before. Thank you that you have, you have told us that you will help us through it, Lord. We pray that you help us to understand and apply these teachings in our lives. And every time we hear your voice, We'll be quick to obey and not to argue with your word, O oh God. O oh Lord Jesus, thank you that you have assured us of, of guidance, protection, 
in our daily walk of faith. In this year, oh God, help us to keep trusting in you and following you. Because you ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.